He is a henchman on the Ben Maller Show, an accomplice, if you will. It is the great Justin Cooper, executive producer of the show. He is on Twitter at UH Bronco Fan. I'm Brian Fenley, an anchor at FSR. First of all, Justin, why did you lose the bowl cut? <laughs> uh, it was just time. When? Like, a couple years ago because it was your trademark growing up and being such a famous childhood actor. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a few years ago. How many times when you're not working and you're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm off tonight. I'm going to put my feet up and I'm just going to put into my VHS player, the movie liar, liar and watch myself or any movie <laughs> that you've been a part of. Well, uh, I don't have a VHS player, uh, but uh, it's pretty much never. Uh, I'd say that on the rare occasion that I'm channel surfing and it happens to be on HBO, I might stop and watch it. But uh, it's, been a, it's been a long time since I've seen it all the way through. What does a 32-year-old Justin Cooper think about the youngster that you come across when you're channel surfing? Uh, I, think I, I think it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what was it like to work with Jim Carrey off the set and how you two worked together for, that, for the film Liar Liar? Um, I, I know it sounds super cliche, but uh, he was actually pretty cool. Um, he was, you know, very respectful my mom was uh, very like kind of strict somewhat overbearing like stage mom and she was the type that was like you know don't cuss around my kid which is you know funny to say to like you know Jim Carrey but yeah. uh he was he was cool about it and uh he was always very nice Ben Maller is a nice guy although he gives off this persona on the radio like he's this maniacal meanie but he does it for show and I love him for it but what is Ben's nicest or best trait besides his receding hairline <laughs> huh. um, I would say it's not and it's, and it's funny because I, I think this is his best trait but uh, you know if you talk to uh, other people like higher ups, I guess they would probably say it's his worst trait, but uh, he's, he's not somebody that kind of like, you know, kowtows to, to anybody or, or um, like kisses ass, which I yeah. can't stand people that do that. But Hey, I mean, kissing ass gets you places, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, I respect people that don't do it. How much input does he let you have during the show and when it relates to the show? As far as the topics we discuss? Yeah, topics or segments or when to break or how many <laughs> callers you get, you know, how many callers you'll allow in before you got to go to break or anything to do with the show. Um, so as far as topics goes, zero. Uh, ben knows what he wants to talk about. Um, uh, I, as far as like callers that go on, I, I, I pretty much have free reign with that. Um, so I, I get to control that. Uh, as far as getting to break, I try. <laughs> he, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't always listen, but you know. Hall of Fame caller moments. What have they been? If you think of some of the best caller moments of the show, what comes to mind? Hmm. Ah, that's a that's a tough one because I've been I've been doing the show for so many years and there's been so many great moments. Um, you know, uh, pretty much all of Jeannie's calls uh, come to mind. She was she was awesome. You know, there's a reason we named Caller of the Year after her. Um, I, I think you know he's got crazy like bipolar personality. And he's come after me before, but I think Brian Scott's one of the best callers of all time. 
um, when he gets all fired up and starts talking a mile a minute, like he just did a, a you know, a rail of cocaine. I think <laughs> that's hilarious. I think he's, I think he brings it as a caller. So there was a, you know, there's, there's been a couple like Brian Scott calls that have been really great. Um, and then Marcel recently, uh, just him butchering names and, you know, wanting to be a reporter, uh, the, the Pascal Sia come is probably one of the best drops of all time. Speaking of butchering names, you had the opportunity to fill in for Eddie doing an update. He let you do it. And how did it go? <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, it was <laughs> on the spot. I didn't have like any time to prep Okay. for the update so i feel like i would have knocked it out of the park if i even had like 10 minutes to prep an update uh but i went in there for the moment thinking that because i've seen how some uh update anchors do it they kind of have like their script that they go off of and that's how i thought eddie did it so i went in there to do the update thinking oh i'll just read off of eddie's script sure and i went in there and he's really just got bare bones <laughs> yeah. bulletin points like with like that's it just like straight like scores and 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 so I was kind of like oh geez I gotta kind of come up with this on the spot so you know I was trying to put some flair in it and I said the major league baseball yes I know <laughs> was that the time you said Robert in can income income dash Robert uh, Akimdichi yeah no that was uh I think that was during a Mallard of the Third Degree segment. I was asking <laughs> Bennett, which which you would think I would have prepared to learn how to pronounce his name. Uh, but yeah, no, I just uh, I wrote it down and then went for it and realized, oh, God, I have no idea how to say this. <laughs> but Kendichi, I know how to say it now. Well, see, now you will never forget it after all that. <laughs> Best on-air argument that you've had with Ben Mallard. I remember one that it was so senator centered around i think i was in for eddie one night and it was aaron Rodgers, and it was whether he was giving money to charity and that he needed to be acknowledged to do it and you were yeah so yeah or or was that one or what other ones come to mind well um i guess the question of like best argument depends on who you're asking um <laughs> I, I know that the listeners love when we get into political arguments. <laughs> I, I hate it personally. Um, I mean, like I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm passionate about that, but uh, I don't like fighting with Ben about that because I feel like that gets a little too serious. Sure. Uh, when we're arguing about sports, even though I also get passionate about that and we start yelling at each other, I don't really care that much, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun, but you know, at the end of the argument, it's like, okay, cool. Like, you know, what, you yeah. know, there's no, so I know the, the listeners love the political debate, but I, I don't like those. So yeah, that, that charity one, I think I owned him in that argument. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was, that was a good one. What was it? Refresh my memory because he said that something about Aaron Rodgers' brother and that there was some strife within the family and that he was giving money just to look like he was a good person when you shouldn't, or, or you, or yeah, take us, if you, if you remember. I think pretty much what I was saying is that, you know, even if it's, he, he doesn't like when people like announce that sure. they're giving to charity and, I think Aaron Rodgers tweeted out that he gave a million dollars to to some cause or whatever. And Ben's take is like, Oh, you know, it, it's, it's stupid. If you, if you announce it, like yeah. you're, you're doing it for attention. And I disagree in the fact that Aaron Rodgers has a lot of followers, you know? And so saying, Hey, I gave a million dollars to this brings attention to all the people that follow him it brings attention to the cause. And so they think, oh, well, you know, I want to contribute too. And so it brings more focus on whatever cause that he's, 
you know, mm-hmm. donating to or, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, no question. What would you say was a monologue that Ben gave that you thought was his best work of all time? Was it something around the Dodgers? Was it the Astros? Or like, what were you just like, dude, he, he nailed it. So those Astros monologues are, are great. Uh, but he's done so many of them that they kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of blend together for me at this point. He, he's, he's, he's beaten that horse dead. And I, I mean, I get it. The Astros are dirty cheaters. But my favorite monologue, at least recently that I can think of, is him coming on after the Clippers blew that 3-1 lead to the Nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I mean, he, he cursed on the air, which I've never heard before. So <laughs> that, was, uh, that was awesome. Oh, my gosh. And then when did he take the biggest L as far as a sports take? Because he's taken a lot of them. He will never acknowledge that he has. But what are some of the biggest L's he's taken? Well, it's got to be every single season with the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> Easily. Um, the, the another one is, you know, there, there's, I mean, yeah, like you said, there's a lot, there's a lot of them. But I, I think where he takes most of his L's is when he personally dislikes an athlete and says how they're not going to be good and and then they are and then he refuses to give them credit after like like Deshaun Watson he had a kind of a personal vendetta with him early on in his career and Deshaun Watson's been great like even though the the team around him hasn't always been great and so he doesn't give credit there uh Kyler Murray I know there's there's definitely things wrong with Kyler Murray that he's lacking in but He's been much better than Ben ever no gave him credit yeah. for. Yeah. So that's that's another one I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. When do you remember laughing the loudest on air? Do you I and mean, there's, there's so many times? Um, I think it's definitely the first time Real Talk did a karaoke <laughs> with Eddie. And uh they uh they did uh I don't even remember the name of the song, but it was a weird, um, it was a weird, like, almost like a love song. (laughs) Shattered picture, something like that. (laughs) Or, oh my gosh, okay, that, I can, I can only, I can just picture that. Well, Eddie hates real talk, so I didn't, and when Eddie agreed to do the, the karaoke, I didn't really think he was going to, um, get into it. Yeah. And, and and he did. He, like they both just went for it. It was hilarious. We were all dying. Evidence of Ben cheating on games, on air games. Where have you seen it? Uh, all the time. Um, but it's it's tougher now because you know obviously he's not in studio. Yeah. But you know we've we've seen him stalling and like for password, for example, typing on com or whatever um you know trying to uh, his favorite move is just stalling so that we run out of time and when he's got the lead and we (laughs) we hit the the end of the segment so we can't finish the game yeah what's different about him as a radio host than any other radio host that you've ever listened to hmm um well i think that a lot of, I think a lot of radio hosts have manufactured takes uh, in the sense that, you know, they'll get together with their producers pre-show and what you hear on the radio is more one of their producers takes than the host's actual take. But, and they do that because it's a topic that's going to play well on the air and everything Ben says is, it's either exactly what he thinks or when it comes to teams that he hates on, it's just him being a contrarian hater. Like when it comes to the Lakers or, you know, the Lakers, that's, that's that's pretty much, (laughs) or the Astros, I guess. When the Lakers won it all, what was the joy like for you? Because you got to try to stick it in his face knowing he's a Laker hater. So, okay. So the, the bummer was I was actually 
um, I was on vacation when they when they clinched the title. So I wasn't there for that night of, which you know would have been great. Um, but you know, I, I look, I knew it was. It, it seemed it's like he said he said they were going to do terrible, and I, I just you know I felt. I felt vindicated, but I'm never one to like, I like to enjoy the win rather than use it to like throw in other people's yeah. faces. I, I save their team losses to throw that in their face rather than my team's win. Yeah, you know what I mean? for sure. I got two more questions for you. Justin Cooper with us, executive producer, Ben Maller show. Follow him on Twitter, UH Bronco fan. A lot of you that do follow him are going to watch this. I'm excited to get their reactions of this. But the pre-show meeting, what is it like, like the hour before or what you guys try to do planning purposes? A lot of it's certainly ad lib and that's radio and that shows the talent of what you guys do as a unit and as a show. But what takes place in sort of like a typical production meeting when you guys oversee how you want to run things for a particular episode. It's, it's mostly ad lib. Um, you know, Ben will tell me the topics of his, his monologue mm-hmm. that he wants to do for each hour. And so then I kind of know to look for uh, any sound that we have that relates to what he's going to talk about and have that ready. Um, and then as far as like everything else though, it's pretty kind of uh, structured. You know, we've got the scheduled game shows that we do on specific days. And so a lot of my pre-show prep is writing uh, those like game show segments uh, that we do. Final question for you. I saw the great tweet you had a couple of days ago where you called out Jonas Knox about how he <laughs> thought that the Browns were going to get annihilated by the Steelers he seems to deny that did you hear that that he said that because I, I'd like some clarification here on what actually took place oh yeah I, I, I saw his his tweet denying it which is total BS he, he, he filled in for for Ben for a whole week and he spent that entire week you know talking to Ed because Eddie's the Steelers fan and so he kept saying to Eddie, oh, you know, oh, you've got nothing to worry about, Eddie. Like, the Browns have no chance. They're going to get smoked. <laughs> and so it's, it's there. It's on the podcast. If you want to check it out, you can, you can hear it. There's, there's evidence. And he even he, – he texted me privately after that, after that tweet saying that uh, that weekend he actually did really well in his picks. But all that he got was, was crap for the Browns pick because of the tweet that I sent out. <laughs> Oh, it was perfect. It was perfect. You keeping him honest and you certainly try to keep some humility on Ben Maller as well. Justin Cooper. Thanks so much, man. I'm Brian Fenley. Really appreciate it. This is fun. And I know a lot of people will enjoy listening to this. Absolutely. Thanks, man.